Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in crypto and bring them out of bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got a story that I didn't think was too big until I really delved deep into it. And nobody is talking about this, which is crazy. So first up, we're going to talk about Circle, who created USDC, is going to become a national reserve bank. And why I think this could potentially become just a game changer, really, as we take a look into it. Also, we're going to take a look at uh, what I call a hacker with a heart. We're going to take a look at the poly network hack as how this hacker is actually giving back uh, funds. And then lastly, we're going to take a look at uh, Susie Orman, who is a financial guru, and she finally gets on board and talks about Bitcoin and how you need a dollar cost average. But what really surprised me about it is just how wealth or how deep her knowledge goes into Bitcoin and how great it can be. And then also we're gonna talk about uh, the Puerto Rico video, which I'm gonna to drop tomorrow and my final thoughts. So first up, let's just take a look at the market and see what is going on. So of course, uh, what goes up must come down. And that is exactly what has happened here where we got a market cap of 1.85 trillion. We hit 2 trillion and uh, just happened to lose 150 billion. What are you gonna do? So 150 billion, gone people taking profits taking people uh taking the crypto off the table or their money off the table and that's uh normal that's what people do and not a big deal if you have taken money off and uh take a little bit of profits hey good for you you don't have to be rock hands stable hand diamond hands whatever the uh, the savings sayings are which i think is a ridiculous statement i don't think you need to hold until all time until eternity uh my goals are not your goals and your goals are not everybody else's. So whatever you need to do to take care of you and your family, you do that thing. And uh, that's the big stuff that's going on. As far as coins, as far as uh, the tokens, and I'm using the trade the chain format. So if you wanna take a look at that, links in the description. Um, hey, Bitcoin, 43,000, Ethereum has dropped below three, and Binance coin is 373. I'm just gonna go over the top three. And if, uh, and if you don't like it, uh, well, then uh, you should be talking more about your project so I can talk about the top three. That's all I'll say. So here's what here's also what it is, is uh, if I want to take a look, if you're a big trader, we'll take a look at the projected range as far as with 90% accuracy. Uh, take a look at these between uh, 0.19 and wow, plus 8% in the next hour, 0.6 to 6%, negative 2 to plus 7%. Look at Perlin Tron, wow. Electronium, Keep Network, Titan Swap, Stacks and Raiden Network. I don't know any of those but uh, maybe somebody out there who does and likes to trade, that could be your big play. All right, so that is what's going on in the market. Let's just break into the day's top story, which is what I think is, is it's fantastic, honestly. And uh, there was a story from Bitcoin.com and all these stories, they kind of flesh it out, go over like the basics. And it just talks about how Circle, uh, who created USDC, intends to become a full reserve national commercial bank. And it's, uh, it's a good article, very sparse. So I went to the source, just to take a look at what is going on. And this is actually um, written by Jeremy Allaire. Uh, he's the CEO, he's head of Circle. And uh, I like to see what his musings are, what he's talking about. And uh, if he wrote it, uh, maybe he's got somebody that works for him, but uh, it's really well thought out. And this is what is going on. So when we take a look at this, first of all, I was pretty surprised uh, that USDC was launched just three years ago, just three years ago. Uh, it's not like Tether where it's been around for a long time, uh, just three years. And I thought that was uh, pretty impressive from what they've done. But uh, it states USDC has grown to become an important infrastructure for the new digital currency enabled financial system, circle in partnership with Coinbase and through the Centra Consortium, designed USDC to conform with stringent US money transmission, supervisory and regulatory standards. And when I take a look at this, I think to myself, why do you have to do all those things? Why do you have to really get in there and really just you know, make it uh, so stringent and so tough to get things done? And the reason is, uh, the basic reason just really comes down to this. It's because you wanna build partnerships and you wanna grow at a pretty good rate. And uh, at some point you're gonna need partners and partners like with Visa, which this was done a long time ago, December 3rd, 2020, Circle announced its partnership with Visa to bring the benefits of stable coins to businesses worldwide. We had covered this back then, and I didn't think it was a big deal. I'm like, uh, I mean, that's great that Visa is along for the ride, but who cares? Who cares about stable coins and uh, USDC? We'll get to that in a second. So to come on back here, we've got, 
with USDC at more than 27.5 billion in circulation and building on our longstanding commitment to trust, transparency, and accountability in the dollar denominated reserves backing USDC. We are setting out to become a US federally chartered national commercial bank. And what this means to me is, I'm not a big fan of a bunch of banks, but what it means to me is that uh, on top of this and, and uh, the crypto bank that's gonna come up in Wyoming, uh, this is a big thing because now people can go back and forth and it's like a ramp. It's like a super simple ramp to go between uh, the banking service, traditional banking services, to money, to stable coins, to cryptocurrency, to DeFi, and back again. It's a seamless um, integration and it's, I think it's gonna make things a lot easier. And on top of that, if we can get some type of insurance, FDIC insurance or something like that with uh, hacks and things, uh, I think that would be an ultimate game changer. Imagine how easy that would be to convince your friends, family, loved ones to get into cryptocurrency by just going to something they already know what to do, a bank. And it just makes things a heck of a lot easier to integrate. Anyhow, Circle intends to become a full reserve national commercial bank operating under the supervisory and risk management requirements of the Federal Reserve, U.S. Treasury, OCC, and the FDIC. I know some people will say, well, I don't like that because I hate the government. But you gotta, I got to tell you, it's a lot easier to uh, start a revolution when you're coming from the inside out as opposed to the outside in. In the coming years, we anticipate that USDC will grow into hundreds of billions of dollars in circulation, continuing to support trillions of dollars. And re check this, in low friction, high trust, economic activity, and become widely used in financial services and internet commerce applications. So think about that for a second. If you want to transport money around, we always talked about this with uh, with XRP and Ripple and, and uh, diff other different things. Wouldn't it be great just to do that with a stable coin, especially in a bank that you could do, and then not have to pay, you know, $20, $50 or whatever else it is to send money back to your family, friends, and loved ones, whatever country that you're from, or just to send money uh, via a wire. A wire via a bank is 20 bucks every single time. So do you think that huge businesses would love to get away from that if they can use some kind of stable coin and just transfer it over? And on top of that, wouldn't it be great if you could go into a bank and have a, uh, I don't know, a pretty good uh, savings account or checking account that gives you some kind of yield, like what Voyager gives and Celsius gives, which is like 8.88%, 9%. Maybe it'll be the same thing with these stable coins. I think uh, if I was a bank, traditional bank, I'd really want to get on board this before I get blockbustered. So uh, to continue on, since inception, USDZ reserves have been bound by the permissible investment rules under state money transmission re regulations, which is how we are regulated today. These rules and central standards are designed to protect consumers and ensure one-to-one -one dollar liquidity. And when I'm talking about liquidity and one-to-one -one swaps, think about this and think about other stable coins, such as a Tether, which there has been a big discussion around that if they have liquidity. I'm not here to debate that part. I've already talked about that in numerous uh, videos. Uh, but if you've got some other type of stable coin that is uh, open and transparent and is allowing people to audit them frequently and uh, have a bunch of regulations on top, uh, I think that might be a winner. So you can see from our latest attestation that USDC reserves are made up of cash, cash equivalents, and other high quality investment grade assets all issued within the US rather than offshore and consistent with the requirements of our regulators. However, market observers, people like you and me, have correctly focused attention not just on reserve sufficiency and credit quality, but also on fundamental questions of liquidity, including liquidity in times of intense demand to redeem USDC. In the commercial banking sector, the global standards are this. It's a base, base three or basal three, which are standards to ensure that banks can provide one to one dollar liquidity to depositors, even during extremely rare high stress periods with sustained large outflows for a full 30 days. So here's the thing. When they're talking about that, in all honesty, I doubt very much that my bank has actual paper, has actual fiat currency. If I go to my bank and everybody in my bank, everybody who is a member of the bank that I go to, goes to the local branch and says, give me all my money right now because of Basel three requirements. You need to give me my paper right now and you have to sustain that for 30 days. There is not a snowball's chance in hell they're gonna be able to do that. I'm pretty sure they do not have those types of currencies. But uh, for here, for Circle, they're going to hold themselves to that standard and they're going to back everything else uh, with it. Now, 
Uh, could it actually happen? I'm not saying it could or couldn't, but I'm just saying it's very interesting that if there was a what's called a run in the bank, uh, that they have to have a full 30 days. I did not know that. Very interesting. I'm going to ask my banker uh, that about that uh, later, but I doubt they have it. So to finish up, uh, we have always exceeded and will continue to exceed the bank grade LCR and HQLA requirements under Basel III. As we move towards national bank level regulatory supervision, we will begin to publish info about the fundamental liquidity of USDC and our liquidity coverage under Basel III. And it talks about where you can find this because they have registered with the SEC and da 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 da, Circle Acquisition Public Limited Company, which they are publicly traded. So, look, um, I think this is pretty big news. I think it's not going to happen tomorrow. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon. But uh, it just shows you where things are going and the future of cryptocurrency and digital assets. And I think uh, it's a bright future, especially with what's going on, especially with people who are partnering up uh, with USDC. I never was a big fan of Tether. I never liked uh, the anonymity of what's going on and the things that are surrounding Tether and everything that has to go with the audits. You can use Tether all you want to. My goals are not your goals. I just don't touch it. I don't touch it and uh, I only use USDC. I think it's uh, very stable. And on top of that, uh, we had covered this before as far as like with unstoppable domains. Unstoppable domains, uh, I had done a, uh, a video, gosh, about a week ago when I was in Puerto Rico and uh, they have integrated with USDC to provide you not just .crypto and .zill domains, but also .coin so you can transfer any kind of stable coin, well, USDC stable coin, uh, which are supported in 30 different wallets uh, for USDC. So wouldn't it be nice if you had your name, Joe Smith, dot coin and you say send me some money what do i send it to well you can send it to 0x75354258377725yx or johnsmith.coin seems pretty simple so if you're looking for to uh sign up for that get an unstoppable domain uh, nft or, or address just look in the description below there's a link looks something like this and you can grab it before it goes away so uh, i've got a couple uh myself works out pretty well and uh, also, um, like for domains, you know, where you have to like pay for a domain every single year, like GoDaddy or all those different hosting companies. When you get Unstoppable Domain, it's a one-time fee and it's yours for as long as you want it to. And it's uh, NFT. So good luck taking it away because it's in your own wallet. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And the next part is a, it's an interesting story. And um, it just, it goes to show me uh, the things that I don't know. Uh, as far as like people. And when I hear about hackers, I hate, I hate, I hate scammers. I hate scammers. Hackers are a whole different type of world. And, and their whole, some hackers, not all, their whole thing is, is getting into and obtaining information, obtaining funds, obtaining something that, uh, that they can say, I did that. And there's all different types of hackers out there. I leave it up to them in their realm. But this one was interesting. The poly network hacker, uh, is returning millions in DeFi tokens. So that $600 million hack that just happened three or four days ago, um, he's like returning a bunch of the money and he's just saying, hey, uh, this was a great challenge. Thanks so much. So here's what's going on. Two days after the notorious uh, Poly Network hack, the hacker continues to send funds back to the project. And before I go on, just you know that uh, Poly Network is not Polygon. I know in the video uh, yesterday, I was talking about Polygon in the uh, in the daily news or the uh, all the different coins that I was talking about. And I, I said, Polygon's up. And I went right to Poly Network. I didn't, uh, didn't bifurcate and tell you that there's a difference between Polygon, the project, and Poly Network. I thought that was clear, but I wasn't clear enough, so sorry. So Poly Network is, is not Polygon or Matic. So anyhow, the Poly Network hacker so far has returned millions worth of Ether, thousands of unique tokens, and 1,032 wrapped Bitcoins, and 96 million stable coins. That's nice. Uh, after returning 260 million tokens, the hacker explained that the Poly Network has well enough assets to start the recovery phase. And, and what's interesting to me is that in the initial stage, it didn't seem like, like it says here, the hacker was gonna cooperate. And then he said, hey, you're lucky I'm doing that because it could have been a billion dollar hack. And again, there's a, uh, there's a great thread that uh, someone had actually reached out to the hacker and asked him a bunch of questions. And he had responded into why he did it, what's going on, what's gonna happen in the future for all these coins. And he did say, I'm gonna give it back. It's just that uh, I just wanted to show you exactly how easy this is and uh, how you really need to be careful. And uh, 
I'm sure he's going to keep some because I, I probably would just assume, but maybe he brings, gives it all back. But it's just interesting that uh, a person that just sold $600 million, if you had $600 million, would you just return it because you could get away with it scot-free? Or would you be like, yeah, I'm just going to keep it myself. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. I will say the last thing I want to talk about is this, and this is important. He states, and this is I want everybody to make sure they know this, in the DeFi world, you can trust nobody but the code and yourself. So as great as these projects are, just be careful out there because there's only so much they can do. There's only so much protection. And there's only so much that a code can actually give to you. So that's really what it comes down to is look for the projects that are doing their due diligence and are not rushing everything to market. Okay, and you can probably figure out how that is. So that takes care of that. And the next one, Susie Orman um, came out and talks about Bitcoin and dollar cost averaging. First of all, who's Susie Orman? Susie Orman is this lady. You know you've seen her. She's everywhere. She's been on MSNBC and CNN and all the big talk shows. And she talks about financial independence and savings and, you know, really, you know, stud fast type of person. Not like Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey's just all about, you know, get away from Bitcoin and just, uh, you know, save your money and put it in a savings account. Yeah, sure. As it, as it blows up with uh, 2 to 15% inflation. <laughs> Whatever. But I mean, he, he does have some good points, nothing against Dave Ramsey. But Susie Orman uh, kind of blew me away that she was so um, well-versed in Bitcoin. So here's what's going on. Uh, the Susie Orman Financial Group founder, who show around CNBC from 2002 to 2015, written 10 consecutive New York Times bestsellers, named twice on Time Magazine's list of the 100 most influential people, and was appointed as a personal finance edu educator for the United States Army and reserves in 2016. Boy, I wish she was around when I was in there because I blew a lot of money. In her recent Money Women and Money podcast, Orman advised her listeners how to invest in Bitcoin and shared why she thought the crypto will perform well in the future. She says, I think it's something that you hold for the long term or you dollar cost average into with very little amounts. Sounds good. Sounds very safe. I'm sure once you get in there, it's really a gateway crypto. And before you know it, you're gonna be buying a bunch of other stuff anyhow. So if Susie Orman is telling her millions and millions of fans what to do and they trust and respect her, I think that's uh, some more people in a win for us. Furthermore, she know that crypto could become a payment mechanism, elaborating. It seems that the direction Bitcoin is going is that unlike gold that can't be used to make a purchase, it seems like people are starting to gear up where crypto isn't just going to be something like gold, it really would possibly turn into a payment structure. And I couldn't have said it better myself. And she probably is citing things about El Salvador and different company, or countries uh, trying to integrate Bitcoin. So I commend Suzy Orman for looking beyond the pale and finding uh, the next opportunity, which I think crypto and digital assets are. And um, again, um, it's not so much about, you know, uh, people getting into it. It's about people who trust and respect people and trust. It's a big thing. It's a commodity you can't buy. And when somebody like that comes out and says, Bitcoin's safe, Bitcoin's okay. You should be okay with investing into it. I think a lot of people will uh, sit up and take notice, especially all those boomers out there, uh, which I'm rapidly becoming one of. Anyhow, so that is what's going on. And then lastly, I just wanna finish up with two other things, which is, I know I've been promising this Puerto Rico video and there's been so many things going on. I'm not gonna go into it here, but uh, I'll be talking about some limited parts about my experiences, who my realtor is, who my lawyer was and everything else on tomorrow's video. And I wanna reference this article, which was from Coindesk about living in Puerto Rico, where the tax are low and crypto thrives. And just kind of give you a basic overview of what's going on. And, uh, you know, if you wanted to go that route, the pros and the cons and everything else. I'll be doing, this will be a two part. Uh, and once I get to Puerto Rico, which will be in three weeks, three weeks, uh, I'll be sitting down with those people I just talked about. Real estate agent, people around there, people who have their lawyers, people you can contact, everything else. I'm just going to give you the blueprint about what, exactly what I did. And then my final thoughts are this. Um, look, tomorrow is a big day for Cardano. Ada, Charles Hoskinson is going to come out and he's already uh, pegged a, a time slot or a day for when he is going to reveal uh, smart contracts. I would see that this is going to be a big day for Cardano and finally it's here. So look for a little price action there. Not investment advice, just investment opinion. And you can take that as you will. But um, again, I think we're going to see some turbulent turbulence, especially in this month, especially with that infrastructure bill that got passed uh, by the Senate has to go to, through the House in the U.S. And I think there's going to be some haggling and maybe uh, we'll see it even shot down and get sent back. I don't know. 
uh, exactly how to work. But uh, even with that news that came out and the uh, that poly hack, 600 million, look what happened to the market, still went up. So when you see negative news like that and the market still hits $2 trillion, looks kind of bullish to me. Anyhow, I think uh, it'll be a good time. Good time had by all. We'll see. So look, if you made it all the way to the end, I want to say thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. If you liked the video, found some value, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And uh, that is it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.